mouse spawn. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Beyond the Summit broadcast. We are casting the stars slatter between Mouseboard and Virtus Pro. That's the one. That's the one. And you, yep. with the intro like that, you know this is Luminous. And of course, I'm joined by Gods. Oh, yeah. Um, Star Last Star Series, apparently this is a deciding match to decide who goes to the land finals. The winner does, the loser either does not or is in a tiebreaker or something. Mouse Sports, even with losing Kuroki, they're still competing and competing at the top of the European scene at the moment. Yeah, I mean, despite losing Kuroki, they're actually playing a l very, very well. Like, in a high level that you don't expect them to play at, despite not having Kuroki. So, uh, we're seeing some uh, European ban after that slugfest we just watched from LGD and... And, uh, 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 well, maybe LGD and Orange just had a little gentleman's agreement said, we're not going to pick up Phantom Lance or Keeper of the Light. Or they're just onto something and don't think the heroes are all that particularly strong. I'm thinking it's the second case, not the first. Yeah, well, and the, the good news is, oh, I, well, I don't know if it's good news, we get to see Batrider and Nyx Assassin. All four of these bands were heroes not banned or picked in the first ban or pick stage. Nazi yeah. didn't even get picked in the first pick stage when he wasn't banned, so... I don't think he got picked or banned in the second stage either that last game. So, um, yeah. yeah. Very, very different scenes. Showing very. differences in playstyle, differences in terms of uh, philosophy of the game. Not necessarily who is right or wrong on that. We'll have to wait till TI3 for that to be decided. But for now, Virtus Pro will be opening it up with the Bat Rider, Nyx Assassin, Nature's Prophet here on the Malsport side. So, back to Nature's Prophet is he's all the hype about Midas and Shadowblade now, is he? On the European scene, at least. Yeah, it seems to be. Fnatic have uh, been causing some a bit of a stir there. Every now and then, there'll be maybe a mech mixed in as well, but it seems to be the Midas Shutter Blade into some sort of DPS or semi-DPS style of build. And a very early pickup by Mouse Sports onto this hero. Yep, Virtus Pro with the Batrider, one of the strongest solo mid hero um, ever. And uh, basically banned out 95% of the games, I want to say, but gonna see some play this game. Shadow Demon and Gyrocopter is gonna get picked up here. We've been uh, really familiar with a support Gyrocopter being played by uh, LGD Inns Misery, but I think we're gonna see more of a carry style here from Virtus Pro. Yeah, Virtus Pro like to generally run this as a farming carry. Uh, otherwise, they could run out of the mid lane, but Batrider, I feel, fits in a bit better than running Batrider in the off lane. Not really his sort of his normal home. Can always go jungle here, but the two carry heroes that Virtues Pro like to run quite a lot for Airman like is generally the Gyrocopter or the Luna. Remaining. Sure, and definitely a very, very powerful carry at that. We'll bring you back from situations that arguably perhaps you should not win games of if, if you even get Divine Rapier on that. Not that I'm actually referring to any game that was recently played, but just shows you the power of Flat Cannon. Yeah, no, absolutely. And his, uh, third pick now coming from Mouse. It's the Black Anti Mage. Mouse Sports, unfortunately, are playing with a stand in. According to their manager, Paisy, Pass is having some internet issues today. So they're playing with a stand in, unfortunately. But Nino, a pretty capable stand in. Uh, definitely nothing to uh, take away from him, but it's never always a good sign, especially in such an important get, like, I mean, tournament deciding match here. This decides whether or not you go to the land finals to compete for the, the top four prize. Even if you finish fourth in, your, in the, the ladder, you can still get that first place prize. So. Unfortunately, they're not being playing with their full roster, and this is a land finals without Navi. Yeah, Navi aren't in that thing. top four. That's a big thing. That money is up for grabs for any of these teams. If you look at, I think it's No Tide Hunter, Empire, um, who are up there. It's it's really anyone's Fnatic as well. They they're also in the top four. I think those are the other three teams, and one of these two teams will join them as the fourth team. Hopefully, I mean, someone in chat corrects me if I'm wrong. But that, that's really anyone's. Those four teams are all pretty much even. I'd give a slight edge to maybe to Fnatic, but. At best, it's maybe 30% with all the other three having like the remaining 70%. All the other Star Slatter uh, land finals, like, well, Navi's here, let's all play for second yeah. place now. But uh, this one really, really up for grabs. And of course, who can you turn down another land, a chance to play in land? I think that's one of the, uh, what, what players play for, obviously. And the experience is nice. And of course, who could deny the uh, fangirls? Fangirl, that will be there. As well as uh, the you know big cash money, so it's, it's going to be a very very big game for both these teams, and we're moving on rapidly to the second phase of banners. Virtus Pro banning out all the uh, junglers so far. Yep, not going to be seeing any life stealer as well. That's a 
hero we get to see quite a lot. Well, both the European and the Asian team. We've got first. That was one hero that was getting first banned by Orange Esports up against LGD International. Well, Banning Bat as well as the Lone Druid. And more support bans coming out. Ruby gets banned as well. So I think it makes sense. You've already got two. Well, you've got your carry and anti mage. Your solo, most likely an offlaner in the Nature's Prophet. Nyx Assassin can be played mid or can also be played as support, but they haven't really got that hard support yet. So By the way, Magnus still here. Wow. This is completely different metagame. And I don't mean that in a bad way. This is just completely different scene, completely different pick. So it's actually something I'm looking forward to with um, casting from our studios that we can do sort of half and half between Asian stuff and European stuff is that we never get stuck seeing the same metagame over and over again, the same picks and bands, because then later on that night, it's like, hey, let's swap over to some European Dota and we get completely new picks and bands. We haven't seen like any of these picks earlier today. Yeah, and I'm actually very surprised if Virtus Pro don't pick a Magnus here. They might not have exactly the best lanes for it, considering that Batrider would really want mid. He could all definitely go in the off lane, but I feel like Empower plus your Gyrocopter is just definitely just too much, too much damage to pass up on. Maybe a little bit uh, respecting the uh, anti-mage split pushing power, especially if it's Black uh, anti-mage, so maybe they're looking for a little bit more split pusher or ways to deal with split pushers, because Nature's Prophet and anti mage. These are probably two of the game's best split pushers. Obviously, we just saw a morphling, but that's a different story. Yeah, it's a different story, as uh, I don't think we'll be seeing a morphling here, unfortunately. Not, I mean, both teams most likely having picked up their carries. We could see Virtues Pro get some sort of carry or semi carry here, but more likely they're looking at some kind of mid, which Crazy is going to be playing. I'm wondering what that's going to be. As uh, Santa also doesn't really have an obvious offlane here, although it, they can run the bat route in the offlane, but it's just not really an easy place for them to go. They pick up Undying, so they can actually go offensive try lane against anti mage if they really want with this. Shadow Demon, Undying, Gyrocopter. Both Undying, Gyrocopter, fantastic. Decay as well as Rocket Barrage, two fantastic try lane versus try lane spells, and Shadow Demon is a great setup with the Disrupting. Disrupting. Yeah, you, I mean, you can even underestimate Flat Cannon. I mean, right one, you could start hitting the supports, uh, chipping away their HP, and Obviously, he's not going to take that spell one, but starting at level two, you could do that as well. And he makes one of those here that doesn't contribute too much to your trialing early on. Nature's Prophet could TP in with a plus one gank. That's a definitely a legitimate concern. So, Virtus Pro got to pick their pick their lanes very, very carefully. Yeah, absolutely. Is uh, fourth pick now coming out, and they need a strong support. I feel, and a lot of those. Well, the jugglers have been bad. They go Visage. It's. I mean, it's good and it's bad. It's bad because you haven't really got a lineup which is dissing a lot of damage and you're going to make use of the Soul Assumption. But you're going to get those charges from Soul Assumption if you're in a trial inverse trial lane from Virtues Pro. Normally, you'd like it with a strong trial of your own. But it's going to be a more defensive Visage unless they're running something like an anti mage solo. But I don't think you can really do that when there's such a high chance of being against a trial lane. And more likely, you're looking at it, even if he's up against a Batrider 1v1, he can't really win that matchup. So it's going to be maybe a trial lane Visage, Nyx, anti mage. I, I don't like this pick at all, at yeah. all, because if you want to go defensive trial and there's better heroes for that, Jakiro's yeah. being a good range hero that has good defensive capability, Earthshaker is definitely seeing some play, but really, unless your Visage get, or Visage gets really, really big and really, really quick, think of those late game situations, his birds to Gyrocopter's flat cannon, they are Ooh. literal flying money bags. Yeah. It is not even fun. Maybe we look to see another aggressive support being picked up, and Nyx Assassin can go in the mid lane. It's a possibility, but what is going to be that other support option? You need something with a stun, something with a setup, and there's not really a whole lot left to go with the Visage. So I think there's, the options are really limited. I definitely prefer Virtues Pro's draft so far. They've got a really well run line. They can run Night Stalker mid. You've got your trial in which you can either go offensive or not with it. And I think at this point you say, well, what's their trial line going to really offer? We've got a much stronger trial line. You can send that to the bottom lane. Sam Batrider is a safe lane solo, and he's got a 1v1 matchup maybe against the Nature's Prophet. So he all three that. lanes yeah. all three lanes look good for VP then. Yeah, I'm liking VP's draft a lot more here, but Mouseport could definitely do something uh, out of the ordinary. I mean, Nature's Prophet could jungle, and I know I'm really, really saying that just as I can because he's not going to jungle, and I know it as well. Uh, we might see some dual lane mid. Is that even a possibility? No, they're going to pick with Jakiro, so it's going to be a Nyx Assassin mid. Uh, Jakiro defensive try lane, I imagine, and Nature's Prophet top solo, hoping to get a solo versus solo matchup. But again, if you get a solo versus solo matchup, he still loses that matchup. Yeah, and I think Visage pick, it's, it doesn't really, it's a bit of a contrast with the anti mates, the aggressive nuke of the Visage Everybody with the defensive anti mates lane. But I think the idea is more that if they go on him, then you've got that big Visage nuke basically build, sort of turn, turn the fight around a bit. 
Here we go, smoke level one. This is something that we haven't seen for a long, long while. I think we used to see this all the time, but teams are starting to f figure out the importance of keeping those smokes on cooldown, or not on cooldown, like having as many smokes available to you like this. Generally, level one fights like these, you're not gonna actually get a kill, but with that said, this is probably one of the best level one kill. And you can see that they're using Vampire up on the front here. Disruption Someone's is what they want to open like with, and school. are they gonna find, Anti-Mage is not gonna be the good target, but if they find Lino, Disruption, and that's gonna be a first blood for sure. Oh, but there's an ice pad. We're seeing Void to open up. They are gonna get Nino. First blood goes to Shadow Demon, making that smoke very much so worth it. Yeah, nice, nice early smoking. I, I'm actually gonna have to maybe restart quickly. My screen's completely frozen up, unfortunately. Well, we I will have to let you carry on alone. I don't know what's going on. My, okay. my, my screen's frozen, but I can actually still hear you and talk to you, which is it's good and it's bad. Please, it's good I can hear you, but I can't actually see anything. Please enjoy that lasagna. All right, well, I'm going, to exhaust, I'm going to quickly restart and uh, get back in this game as soon as possible and uh, also enjoy my lasagna at the same time. All right. <laughs> oh, Vila. All right, yeah, let's introduce the players. So we have Alex playing that Twin Head Dragon or Jakira on the black, black bot lane. Black is going to be on that anti-mage. Very, very famous anti-mage player. Nino is going to be playing the Visage as a stand-in here. We have... Uh, Fata on the mid lane on the Nyx Assassin and on top looks like uh oh haste rune on Santa four stack already on QOJ Not gonna make that dive and he's gonna be backing off here and QOJ gonna survive that meanwhile Santa of course playing the Batrider up top here for uh, Virtus Pro Tame my wild gonna be going mid here with Night Stalker. Uh, it's gonna have a very awkward matchup here against uh, Fata He's not gonna be able to kill Fata uh, although I'm not sure what Fata is gonna win that lane either Back on the bot lane, which is really the lane to watch. KSI playing the Undying. We have Vampire who just grabbed the first blood on Shadow Demon. And last but not least, we have Illidan the Storm Mage. Storm Rage. And it's going to be playing Gyrocopter. I'm not sure who that is. Definitely uh, not really casting my, my share of Virtus Pro game. That's going to force Black to blink. A lot of damage uh, really being dealt on him. Uh oh. Disruption being cast here. And Nino perhaps in a little bit of trouble. If you can get in range with that. Uh oh, here we go. Nice body blocking by Vampire. That's gonna be a second kill. Vampire's gonna end up going down, but it's actually Jakiro that picked up the kill. So even it's not even that big of a deal anyways. And BTS need to send me back to that overlay school. It's okay. Only like three kills happening and, and like one minute of gameplay, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, guys. Man, I was doing so well today. I was doing so well today. I'm face bombing uh, so hard right now. In any case, KOJ gonna be up on top lane here. He's actually very interesting. Pick up that single point into Sprout. You generally don't see player go Sprout, even as a solo lane, because sure, you could TP in Sprout, but at this point in the game, generally players have tangles, so you could easily tangle away from that quote unquote stun, air quote stun. And it costs a ton of mana, which he generally does not have, because he spams a lot of Nature Squall in lane. So. I actually think it's supposed to be Nature's Call at the bay, but maybe he's think, uh, thinking something else in, in lane. Vampire gonna deny a regen route to Alex, not uh, as well as doing quite a bit of damage there as well. I feel like the Dyer should be playing a little bit more aggressive because Black's anti mage is something to be feared. Unfortunately, you can't kill him, but you could definitely try to kill his, his supports. Nino's been dying once. Look at his levels; he's got none. Alex is level two, and that's what's making it difficult to actually kill Alex. Gonna check if Gods is available to be coming back. Looks like he's still restarting his age old laptop. For all the BTS funding that we have, still no computer. Right now I'm using Purge's computer, so shout out to Purge Gamers and all the other Purge's gamers out there. Top lane, QOJ. I'm actually expecting him to lose this lane, but he's actually doing quite well. These street harass, you can't really underestimate its damage. It's like 22. And that's like an extra creep or two. Oh, I don't think he can make that dive, but the courier is going to be coming in. That's a bottle. And once he goes back to full HP, then really QOJ's got to be very, very careful about his HP level and where he's positioning. He may have a TP, but I'm pretty sure Santa's going to reserve that flame break to cancel that TP and basically go for that kill. I have about 40 people emailing on Skype that my overlay is bad and they have LD breathing under my back so BTS is definitely not exactly a friendly environment to work in there. In any case though, thank you for still staying with us even though our overlay suck. Back at the top, bot lane here, disruption and uh, uh, disruption and DK a little bit of missed time there. 
and Anti-Mage being forced out of the link. Here's a big difference between uh, this particular lane. As we talk, we see Anti-Mage going for a very, very unique build. No points into Brick at all, just going for all the defensive build. And I think stats as well, yeah. This is as defensive as a build as you could possibly get. The one thing that he does have to worry about is that the level 1 Blink does have a... You know, a semi-long cooldown, so if they really want to persist with the chase, they might be able to get black. But he does have poor mana shield, he does have 5 charges on the magic stick, and he has ring of regen, so he should be mostly fine. Flat cannon being used here on the gyrocopter, starting to push the lane a little bit. Now, pushing the lane generally is a bad thing in offensive trialing, but in this case, when you have one of the best tower diver in the game, which is Undying, uh, it's not that bad. He does not have access into Tombstone, though. Level 2 Decay, or, oh, looks like they're going to try him one more time. I'm not sure what really these uh, disruption is really about because they're not really burning anti mages mana. Maybe he thinks he has mana break or yeah, magic break, mana break, but he does not. So these my uh, these disruptions are not doing a single thing. I think they should be trying to do it on Alex or on Nino. But obviously these two supports playing rather back, rather safe. Another disruption on anti mage. I mean, okay. I feel like Vampire is just throwing all of his mana to waste. I think they should really be contesting a jungle or basically camping in position here and then go for the kill. Because Gyrocopter could easily run past the tower and uh, Rocket Barrage is way to victory. But for now, Alex staying in front, gets past the south of his allies. And there's that decay. Let's check out how we're doing in the, in the other lanes here. So QOJ staying in the lane, level 6 already. I think that's also the big factor that's really discouraging the fact that these guys are not being doved upon. Because the Wrath of Nature does a ton of damage in this early stage of the game, especially if you're bouncing around. He's going to be teleporting in with phase boots, so that's a lot of physical damage output there as well. Fata on the mid lane here does have that teleport scroll and Invisrin. Is he going to be going for a gank here at this point? I don't think he could really get a kill anywhere aside from the bot lane, and it's definitely a very, very long trip. Nice Stalker can't really do too much. He may have his bottle, but he's going to get his mana burn as well. He's, yeah, yep, yeah, bottle, burn, burn, no burn just yet. It is nighttime, so that's going to open up the lane here for Nice Stalker to really start ganking the, the bot lane. There's one thing that's not just so good about Nyx Assassin's mid lane performance, as you can see that he's going to be going for the rune, is that when you're against another mid lane ganker like Nice Stalker, he could easily rotate off the lane and basically get kills on the bot lane, and you can't exactly punish for him. If you're playing like a Shadow Fiend mid or let's say a, a Magnus mid, as we see a Wrath of Nature come in right now, they're gonna focus here on KSI. ASI is gonna get burst down very easily done. They're gonna focus on Storm Rage. Storm Rage is gonna get picked off as well. The offensive trialing not getting a single ding done. Meanwhile, Jakaro gets picked off by Vampire, but Vampire is also gonna drop the kill. Four to three in the favor of the Radiant Mouseport getting the goalie back. So this is exactly what I mean between the heroes like Nyx Assassin and Night Stalker. When, whenever the enemy solo mint leaves, you want to get as much damage to the enemy tower as possible. But it was, what is really Night Stalker going to do? Can't do anything. He's going to have just right-click creep. So that's why we don't see Night Stalker as much as solo mid as we used to do before. Is BTS Gods back yet? I don't know, but I'm going to give him a call right now. The lasagna must taste really good. We do apologize for that technical difficulty, and hopefully my solo commentary was quite bearable. Santa on the top lane here got the tranquil boots being finished. Again, credits to QOJ where credits do. He's supposed to lose this lane. I'm very, very surprised that he hasn't died yet. And in terms of CS, he's doing all right. He's, oh, he's actually leading in terms of CS. I'm not sure if he's been sending uh, treants in the jungle. Yes, he have. And of course, that Wrath of Nature definitely well, helps helped out in terms of his jungle form, but he's out farming. He's out farming a bat rider. I can't believe this is actually happening. Well, what have I missed, Lumi? I'm back. Well, you miss the tri lane domination of Virtus Pro and then a huge gank uh, from our NA really turned things around on the bot lane. I think Black was even able to pick up a kill or two. Black yeah. going for a very, very defensive build. Stats, massive stats, blink, sh spell shield, and uh, mana void. And yeah. uh, I think the, the most surprising thing to me is Santa getting out lane up top as a bat rider to a nature's prophet. I can't believe that's happened. He's got oh, two wow. kills. He's got more CS. Huge CS. He's got face boots for extra damage here. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah. That definitely helps out, but you wouldn't really expect that. I like how Black's got no points in mana break because of the disruption. Yeah, and, and Vampire has been disrupting him all day long, maybe thinking that he has it, but his mana is not being drained at all, so. Yeah. 
He's got all these magic sick charges, but that's just going to be used for that blink. And uh, well, I, I guess as you'd expect, the, the offensive channel for BP did win the lane until the next assassin came. Batrider gonna make it out alive. Good play here by Fata. He uh, of course impale and vendetta. After you were used spike herpes immediately to apply that extra second of uh, stun, uh, that the firefly damage being reflected and unfortunately does not have enough damage output. So. Well, Black at the bottom lane, despite the lane somewhat being lost, he hasn't died. He's got at least 20 creep kills at this point. Now brings out his Tranquil Boots, and oh, here comes the initiation. It's, it's Nightstalk coming for Plaza. When you can try to get two out of this, they'll go first on the Jakira, and what an Ice Bar! Actually slows down the Nightstalk, who's trying to chase his Visage as well. Antimage, Black going to try to do some blocking. He gets blocked up, it's not going to be enough, it looks like. They do a lot of damage to this Nightstalk, but he's got full bottle here to work with. So they do get the two kills, that was the important thing. Nightstalk is coming to gank, you can't just get the one support kill, you want to get... Ideally, two, and now they're getting a T1 tower as well. So a very, very big victory here for Virtus Pro. Again, you're not going to get punished here if you move off the lane by ganking, because what is Fata going to do? He can't really push the lane with his low damage impale AoE. So very, very nicely done, and I just want to really applaud Black for his play up there. How often do you see support or a carry blocking for support? Like, yeah, no car carry's just like, oh, see you, good luck. But uh, you know, trying to help his team, it didn't work out there, but it's a thought that counts. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't in too much danger himself, and he, he really tried to keep that Visage alive. If they just lose the one support, it's, it, I mean, it's still worth Night Stalker's time coming for the one kill as well as the T1 tower. Although it looks like it was a T1 tower that was going to go down inevitably with or without the Night Stalker. But now Virtues Pro get themselves some more space. It's still nighttime for a bit longer, so they probably want to try make some more things happen here. Batrider lurking on the mid lane is level 8. Can try Firefly across and grab someone, but still a long way away from any sort of a blink dagger. Yeah, I'm just not impressed with Santa play in this particular game. Uh, and conversely, so very impressed with uh, QOJ. We talked about the Midas into Shadowblade Blue during the pick ban stage. Ooh, he's gonna go for that kill. There's a grab the regen, but it gets immediately canceled. And ultimately, he's gonna pay for it here. A couple more right clicks is gonna do the job. He's gonna magic one run, run the other way to get heal up. Here comes Santa. It's gonna focus on Nino. Tombstone on the high ground, and Vampire is still alive. He's just playing with these guys. They do get the kill on Nino, but looks like uh, Vendetta is gonna be used here to save uh, Fata. Yeah, Feather gets out of there. He's got his arcane uh, boots up. He's actually going to drop them to bottle up. Nice. And after he's bottled up, very cost efficient, he'll re pick up the arcane boots. So he gets more mana out of this bottle than he otherwise would have. He goes from much no mana to 400 mana with a full bottle. And looks like he's going to go back to base anyway. So good. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, he did the absolutely dude. correct thing to do, but uh, it was just awkward. Well, if he's going back to base, he may as well. Uh... <laughs> Not, not stand there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, That's all good. It's all good. He, we wants, he wanted to, uh, looks like, grab another TP scroll, get completely full mana, and now he's going to look for either TP out or start walking out, try and find a lane where he can go to. It's going to be mid lane. And he's going to be joined by Nino there, so maybe going to be able to find a pick up. But right now, mostly just looking to push things out. They've got space for black at bottom lane now, so the main thing is just play a more safe, passive style of play mouse sports until they can get black more and more farmed. And with Nexus Prophet having as good a start as he is, he's gone back for the Midas now. I, I feel Mouse are actually in an okay position here if they can just not uh, not give away too many kills, and that's something which they may not be able to do with this gank going towards bottom lane. Yeah, and we'll talk about that gank in, in a bit here. Black, he, oh, Silence gonna be on top. The Silence was even a little bit slow, but they should be able to flaming last him. He's very, very tanked. He's got 10 charge on the wall. He might survive. He blinks forward. Two stacks on him right now. A second voice should steal the deal. Yep, that's gonna be the kill here. Now, if you look at his items, generally when we see... Uh, Anti-Mage games, 99% of the time it's a Battle Fury build, it doesn't look like one here. Is he getting the Strength Treads first? I think, yeah. uh, maybe just having a naked Belt of Giant Strength for the HP, because he's going to eventually no, that, that can't be good, right? He's going to eventually turn his Tranquil Boots into Treads. Sure. But yeah. Right now he wants the Tranquil effect, but it's a matter of just getting the HP, raw HP. Now, I think if anything he goes back for the Battle Fury, and then after he has his Battle Black's normal build, he actually goes for a really fast Vlads compared to other plays. He often goes... Battle Fury into Vlads, or he gets the Vlads after the Mantle, but he almost always goes for that Vlads. I think I, I love the Vlads quite a bit. I mean, it's a very, very early game item on a hero that you don't expect an early game item on. So suddenly when Anti-Mage blinks in, your first instinct is like, dude, it's minute 13, let's focus him. And he's starting to lifesteal, he's got that Strength Treads up. He could do a lot of damage for himself as well as his teammates. Ice Path on Alex, high ground to low ground, delaying that push. Glyph is not available. 
tower. Looks like defensive too. Five, they're five-man mid, which is, well, T1 tower at top for Mouse. Not to mention they're getting farm in top lane. Also, bottom lane, Black's getting farm space to go as well. So, VP are committing a lot to this. They will get the T1 tower, but I feel like they need to make a bit more happen out of this. Ooh, they're going to try to really defend it there as well. There's a TP they can focus in on Stormbridge. Got to burst him down. They do the... Oh, no, they don't. Not before he drops a call down. That's big. Tombstone's down there as well, and Santa... Trying to do some work. They are going to get a kill on Black, and that's absolutely huge. QOJ is going to get focused. He might have to Midas, but he, if he dies, that's not going to be good. Big pass back here by Santa. QOJ drops the Wrath. He's still trying to run, but the zombie's going to be on top. He's going to be dead. Alex is on the run as well, but Night Stalker, you can't run from him. Alex dies. Jesus, that's way too many kills. KXI will survive that dual, dual breath. It is daytime, but Tame Wow as well as his team, has done way too much work. They're going to get yet another kill on Fata. Mana bro not going to get the kill there. And KSI just playing with Fata right now. Now some great... I've seen Nino. He, he snipes the kill on the side. He does get the Shadow Demon, but they lose the Antimate to the start. It was a very, very zealous idea, though, to go for that fight, and they almost pulled off. They kill that Gyrocopter before the cooldown. If they burst him down, they win that. Well, they, they don't know if they win the fight, but they come off all right. They trade pretty well there, but unfortunately, Undying kept them alive a bit longer. Level 2 Solrit is up on him, and that helps save the Gyrocopter at least for a bit longer. Yeah, I mean, anti mage dying the second time there was really the... I mean, you lose the tower, fine. You lose a couple of heroes, that's fine. But if you lose the anti mage the second time, especially if he's not going for this Battle Fury build, which eventually he will catch up, where is your late game plan? Again, I, I don't dislike... Strength creds into Vlads, I think it's a, a fine item choice. But having a start like this, maybe you're... I don't know. It's not looking good for Black. Yeah, I agree. He's, he's quite behind. But apart, apart from that, I think Mouse had an alright start. But that one fight there sort of turns things around. And Black gets even further and further behind now as he picks up his second death. He's back up to 1200 gold. He needs to find where he's going to get the space to farm now. Because he had all the space in the, in the world at bottom lane. They didn't have to take that fight at mid lane. They're going to lose the T1 tower regardless. And... As a result, I mean, he basically gives up a free farm lane, at least he had a couple minutes more maybe to have a free farm there to go that take a fight, which they don't come out on top of. Yeah, kyoj has got to be playing really good. The split pushing is not going to be coming from Anti-Mage. It's going to be coming from kyoj on his Shadow Blade build, which is uh, uh, working on right now. Yeah, he's also going to hit level 11 soon, so that Wrath of Nature is going to start doing some serious deeps. As, uh, well, he's also going to have, I mean, as you said, Shadow Blade coming up, and he's level 11 with a lot of DPS. Yep. I mean, in between uh, Fada on Nyx Assassin, as well as Wrath of Nature, and of course the backstab coming from Nyx Assassin, the Dyer's actually got to start playing 5-man Dota, which I'm pretty sure they're happy to do so. Santa's going to have his Blink Dagger for this bot push, should anybody challenge him. He's going to go to the Sticker Shop and pick that one up. And of course, you really can't do too much against the Undying, especially with Tombstone Max out being like this. It looks like they want to defend the top tower One teleportation comes in. That's Tame My Wild, second TP there as well. Really? Are they going to challenge us? Mal's are going for a five-man push with an anti-mage draft, and they're, they're succeeding doing it. they got the Revenants doing damage, they got the Treants out, and more importantly, VP just aren't in a position to defend. They're going to watch a tier 2 go down almost. No, here go three-man TP all at once. They need to try to find some kills. There's a Blink Dagger up on Batrite. He's grabbed Alex. Alex is going to be at least one pick up. Here comes your Impale. Alex realizes there's nowhere really to run and hide. Carapus is going to be used to block some of that cooldown damage. Is there anything to stop the TP? Disruption. Goodbye, Fata. Very, very, again, overzealous push, I feel like. I think if you want to do a 5-man push with Anti-Mage, he really needs Strength Treads and, and Vlads. Because at that, that point, the Dire, they just charge up at your entire team and they didn't care because they have Blink Dagger on bat, they have Tomb, uh, Tombstone available, and I just don't think Anti-Mage at this point could take that fight for his team. Uh, yeah. Also, I feel like the Radiant team is just better in terms of like backstabbing or, you know, those guerrilla warfare, having Nyx Assassin and a uh, Nature's Prophet. They're not really built for heads up engagement like that. Despite of that, they saw TPs came in and they just didn't respect VP's ability to take a te heads on fight. I think it's still. The end result is actually not as bad as it could look for Mouse Sports. They, get, they did get the tier 2, Nature's Prophet picks up, he then goes mid, takes a tier 1, and Anti Mage, he doesn't die, he finds space at bottom to get himself some more farm. It's gonna be. A Yasha build, straight Yasha. So he's not. He's going for the Mantis style, I guess, to help get rid of that silence coming out. Realizes this is not a battle for a game, but they get two towers as well as some extra farm for Black in exchange for what two kills and maybe a T1 tower top. They're not even going to lose this T1 at wow. top. If you look at I mean, gold wise, they, Mouse Bolt's actually come out on top of that clash. Yeah, gold wise, they definitely do experience. Though it's uh, another yeah. side story as Virtus Pro trying to get some items. Now their their heroes are not that good. Uh, Twenty. 20 minutes in the game. Aside from the gyrocopter, it's basically uh, other couple of heroes that just you know throw out slows, maybe throw a hero or two. Um, it's really the gyrocopter's game. 
um, for, for him to carry his team. He has to pick up some big items, whether it's going to be a Shadow Blade BKB, which is a fairly common build, or it's going to be a more late game oriented uh, item build. Checking Ancient Stacks. None stacks so far. Well, no Ancient Stacks yet. This is not your typical European Dota, I guess. Yeah, I mean, for Gyrocopter, that's what you want to be doing. Antimates without a battle for you can't be clearing off Ancient Stacks, but. He's going pretty efficiently around the map, catching up on farm. He's already, I mean, it's up to 74 creeps. He's almost got up to the gyrocopter. And the big gold difference is coming from this Nature's Prophet, who is really massive at this point in the game. Is, 130 yeah. creeps. Midas Shadow Blade, level 12. This is, it's really been a fantastic game for QOJ. It really has been, but he's got to do more. Um, I wonder yeah. what his next item choice is. There's, again, generally you start out with the same thing, which is Midas Shadow Blade, and then you could go into a lot of different choices. If you want to uh, put more utility for the team, you could even go back for the mech, but a lot of players like to like that Scythe of Ice. If you want to afford more damage output, Maelstrom, uh, crits, you know, there's just a lot of different options. Yeah. Orchid not bad, I guess, is damage. I don't think there's any real hero he needs to silence, but at the same time, I don't think there's a huge need for a side of vice. It's not anyone. There's like the, the somewhat carry gyrocopter who's going to be going for a BKB, but I think more than anything, maybe even just getting some additional survivability from whatever that may be. But DPS is, is going to be good for QOJ. Bottom lane, though, it's going to be VP looking for that dive. They found the blink less two. It's going to be on Nino. There's no escape from this. Cooldown is there, and it looks like that's going to be him taking a fall. We're going to lose these birds as well. Honey bags. Honey bags. Two down. Man. Well, I, no fault of his own, and there's actually a split push at top lane. They've got to get back here pretty fast. Blip comes out, also a TP from, from the Gyrocopter from Airman, and it looks like they will be able to hold this pretty comfortably. Meanwhile, Black at mid lane, he's been called out. The armlet, the armlet, what's his name? Night Stalker chasing him down. Blink from the Batrider. Flame break back in, and this could be bad for Black. Is there a silence on him? Doesn't look like it. They're actually going to turn things around. They go on the Night Stalker. Black's going to blink out as well. And it's also going to be Virtus Pro Santa getting focused down. Shadow Demon Disruption keeps alive a bit longer. Oh, Santa, so, so lucky. That last Nexus Prophet last hit was going to finish him off. Ice Path not going to land, and that almost went really well for Mouse. Yeah, Mouse abusing the range. Anti Mage manning it up because he can. He has the item to do so. We, do I mean, he's fairly tanky at this point, at least for an Anti Mage without a. Like you said, a value build of giant strength will be used to upgrade to a strength trust later. But that Yasha putting out the deeps against a Night Stalker. A Night Stalker with the armlet activation getting really, really bursted down. I was totally surprised by that. Yeah, and Night Stalker buying back as well. So he spends more of his gold on that. He's got armlet treads as well as this cloak now. I, I like the armlet here. I think it's actually a nice little sort of burst damage item, especially if you get that silence off on anti -mage. You have to kill him during that six seconds of silence. So. Um, it's it's worth having something like this item, uh, the armor, to give you that burst damage you need. Nyx Assassin finds himself in Invis and he's really playing the full utility Nyx Assassin. Arcane yeah. Boots and Mech Up. Uh, I wonder what his next item choice could be. Blink Dagger is definitely a very popular choice. Or get, we've seen Korok do it from time to time. But speaking of Taurus, another one goes down. Night Stalker, he's being caught out here by three-man gank here. It's going to be Jakira, who was the bait. Sprout going up on Night Stalker, he's got nothing to get out of this. Ice Path to fall, and this should be the death of Night Stalker. Yes, it is. Man, Ooh. look at how tanky he was. They, they threw yeah. everything on him. The armor, the treads, the cloak, they really took a lot of time to bring it down. And they knew where he was coming from as well. They laid a trap there. Night, um, Night Stalker was being chased by the Nyx Assassin. Jakira is pretending like, oh yeah, I'm just roaming on the jungle. I'm easy prey for Night Stalker. And then Nyx just proper teeth is in. Nyx comes out of him busy. A long, long time to bring him down. Okay, I know there's some Valve guys watching this game. Please. Please do something about that music. The 20 minute in music? It's normally always 20 minutes in. Yeah, and it would happen in 21 minutes. It didn't happen during the fight. Also, well, more importantly, do something about the end game disconnection yeah, issue. Aren't we all just big complainer and whiner something? Hey, it's a legitimate bug. It is. It's a feature. Oh, yeah. Only, only features. Yeah, no bugs. Lumi 2013. Only, only features and Nyx Assassins. No bugs. <laughs> and weavers. Any case, any case, let's check out where we're at in terms of items. Looks like we are going to see a Scythe of Ice build. Maybe it could be a man style, which can be a legitimate thing in terms of debuffing a couple of things. But I, I really just expect a. Uh, yep, a absolutely. Scythe. And just back to your point, you're right. I mean, who are you really going to Scythe? To to Scythe the Gyrocopter and prevent his damage, that's a fair choice. But still, you still have to deal with that Tombstone. You still have to deal with that Nice Soccer. And if Bat, of course, Blink and Flame Lasso. 
that's a fairly legitimate thing that you also have to deal with, so. And you side them up, maybe there's a defensive disruption to help keep sure, alive. Yeah. So it's not going to be 100% reliable, but it's always going to be a nice item regardless. You get some decent sets. It does even give you some damage as an intel hero, and even if it, when Batrider blinks in, if you can sheep him in time, he suddenly can't really pull away. He hasn't got a four start yet, and even when he gets one, if you sheep fast enough, it's not going to be sort of a, a solution when you've got that side device on, on the field. So it does work actually pretty well against a blinking Batrider if you've got fast fingers. Now, obviously, we're just talking about the defensive uses of a Cypher Vice. Again, it makes that gank so, so much stronger now. And, uh, yeah. Again, we the Phantom with his Nyx Assassin, who went for a mostly a utility build, so he can't rely on his item for more damage. But, of course, with Wrath of Nature uh, and QOJ coming in, that Scythe is going to be a very, very good item to pick off even some of the sturdiest heroes, such as Night Stalker. Yeah, so it looks like, well, both teams sort of back to a more farm-based game here. Anti-Mage. Completed man style. He's 0-2 and 5, and he's he's still seeing on this Bell Giant. I think his next go-to item is going to be the Vlads. He'll exchange it to Treads and then pick up the Vlads. He breaks out the part, the Tranquil Boots, and both the Ring of protect, Protection and the Ring of Regen can be used for that Vlad. So it's very cost-effective. You're not wasting any gold. You're not selling items. You just basically exchange them. You can get some more good stats from the Treads, and, and Vlads is going to be a fantastic game, especially considering this Antimage is taking part in a lot of these fights. Yeah, considering what's happened so far, if he gets to like a 25, 26 minutes Manta, Treads, and, and Vlads, you could push off that. That's a very legitimate item set on your carry hero. Uh, not yeah. again. Not what we was um, DD Dota back when they were really, really strong in sort of like the defense one. When they ran Antimate, they wouldn't go Battle Fury. It would be Treads, uh, Treads, Vanguard, Vlads. That was like their core item, and yep. they pushed with him. They yep. just go push. It was like, hey, this Antimate is really tanky and hard to kill, and also does quite a lot of damage. After the Vlads, they would go for Manta style, but it's just this really cool tanky build. Yeah, shout out to Angel and Miguel. I think that was the core of that lineup. I believe yeah. Rise was back there as well. Rise, Link, and yeah. Mania joined, I think. It was, did Mania join them eventually? I can't remember who their fifth was. He definitely did join at one point, but I'm not sure as well. I don't think he was a starting player. I think he joined later on after that defense run of theirs. In any case here, Virtus Pro making their own quote-unquote star ladder run. As this match, very, very important. Winner could go on to the land final, and that's a big, big deal. Yeah. Absolutely, there's a lot of money out for grabs here, Starlight. I think it's 20,000 20, each season for the well, for spread out amongst the teams. Ooh, nice Stalker's gonna come to mid lane here. He sees Fata, but Fata's gonna be a tough, tough kill. He's gonna dive in regardless. There's a mech killing himself safe. Flaming Lasso initiated. Do they actually want to go on this guy? He's already dropped most of his spells. Tombstone's gonna come down, but Tamai, wow, taking a lot more damage. There's a heal. Finally, the Nyx Assassin does die. Neo, he's actually trapped. Is he trapped between his own trees? I'm not sure why he wasn't moving. He does die there as well. Money bags being dropped left and right. Anti Mage already got the hell out of there, being chased down by uh, zombies or whatnot. Again, not a really a good fight. They, they, I don't want to say they forced it. It's just that Nyx Assassin couldn't really run. Yeah, Nick Sasson got caught out there and Nino hung around for a bit too long and VP making full use of the fact that they just said they said Night Stalker going full Rambo. He doesn't actually use his Aegis there, but they were more than happy to have Night the Night Stalker just lead the fight. Even if he uses an Aegis there, they were always gonna get at least a kill or two out of it. And now they're gonna go for this tier two tower at mid. They've got urn charges to heal people up in between. They're starting to build a mech on this undying, and once they've got that up as well, their composition composition in these team fights looks pretty damn scary. Nature's yeah. profit though, 4.7k gold. Yep, he's gonna have that Cypher Vice finish, if that's what he wants. Hey, you never know, it could be a Scotty. But, uh, I, it could, uh, but it won't. Yeah, it won't be. Now, the uh, the thing that Undyne gotta be really respecting, oh, TP out here from uh, Jakaro, is that he can guide the mech and he, he's buying the mech, but he's a very, very mono dependent hero, especially without Arcane Boots. And, uh,. Now, Mana Burn could be a very, very big thing, especially when he's level up to level 4. Has a very, very low cooldown, so. Yeah, and uh, now VP. Well, at this point, actually, they're going to lose Night Stalker here. He's got Aegis. There's going to be a TP from Nature's Prophet. The backup is there only in the form of Shadow Demon. I don't think he can help him. Yeah. Is there going to be... No, there's no way to escape this. Sprout, everything there. Easy, easy pick off. And that's an Aegis as well, so essentially, may as well have never had that Aegis. QJ, I see your Midas on cooldown for like the past 30 seconds. Please. For the love of ZSMJ. There you go. Phew. Man. ZSMJ can, can rest in peace again. Value loss everywhere. But Black, of course, after that very good Scythe gank, they're able to pick down a tower. And without Night Stalker for 30 seconds, I think they're going to get tier 2 as well. 
an Antiman. He's got 3k gold now. So he's got gold for the Tread Slides. He may even just say, hey, let's just go straight for a Butterfly or a Heart here. There's going to be engagement. Multiple TPs disruption on the Black. So that's going to cause him some issues if he can't blink out of it. Impale goes down onto the Virtuous Post Batrider. And now it's Gyrocopter with his completed BKB just leading the charge. Night Stalker is back. And there is there to keep PP cancelled. They get off the Visage. Jakiro as well. Three heroes dead. Once again, Nyx Assassin I'm unable to do enough. And QOJ. He's being caught out. Silence, Lasso, everything they need to stop his TP out. I think they have a gem up. Yep, gem on the Batrider. They bring him down. It's only the Antimage who survives. He's TP directly top lane to start pushing things out. And, well, a, a great engagement coming from VP right on the uh, the back of the Night Stalker buyback. Yeah, I thought that uh, Mouse was able to take that tower for sure. And I'm sure Mouse thought that way. But immediate buyback and a very well coordinated uh, kind of pushback from Virtus Pro. At this point, if you're if you're black and you're Mouse Port, what do you do? Do you just go for a very leaking win? It seems like, despite getting these pick off, even removing the Aegis from the Night Stalker, you, you still just can't push. Do you go back to farm mode? I ooh, I, I feel far, going back to farm mode is not always going to be a great solution when you're up against an anti mage. And this anti mage, well, no, 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 no. If you're mouse sport, oh, if you're mouse sport, they, they yeah. can't really push despite getting these kills. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the thing is, they they can't really push, but they they've already managed to take down most of these outer towers. And at this point, when you've got an anti mage, you can just go for a bit of a split push if you want. You get Nyx assassin just roaming around the map on his own. The T2 at mid's also really low, so I think they're quite happy to farm. Black's going to be picking up another item sometime soon, I imagine, and. By the fact he saved up this much gold, it's going to be either the heart or the butterfly. Yeah, and those items starting to be a Dyer's decent issue. Now, the thing is that Dyer could always put a disruption on Anti-Mage, and that's going to force him, force him to blink around the fight, because those mana burn will burn all of Anti-Mage's mana, and ironically, he, he needs his manas. He yeah. doesn't hate magic that much. He does really need that blink out. So if, if Shadow Demon, the key thing, if, if Black blinks in, immediate disruption, follow it with a purge, and suddenly he's out of mana and probably dead. Yeah. So Shadow Demon can really watch out for Black making some mishaps like that. But Black, he's, he's versed Shadow Demon so many times and played this hero countless times that it's not likely to be a mistake he makes. But he's going to TP to secret, blink to Secret Shop. What's he going to be getting? Battle Fury. All right. Or Back to the Battle Fury we go. And it could be a Lincoln's. He could be going super tankier. Especially if they're playing Nature's Prophet as sort of their more DPS carry. Nature's Prophet, Demon Edge. Maybe even it's a Lincoln Sphere for Black. And just basically take it, yeah. tank it on frontline. That's the first I will ever see. Battle Fury is still always great. Even, I mean, even after the Manta style, Battle Fury is still great for pushing out lane. It's going to be a Battle Fury. It, it is. Makes, I think it's still good, even not as a first item. At this point, it's not all about farming. It's about split pushing. You sure. split push. You need the cleave for the split push. Yeah, I mean, if you want, it was going to go for a defensive item, I think BKB makes a little bit better sense. Since, yeah. especially against this lineup. Sure, Lasso, go through it, but... You know, whatever. Like he has so much magical immunity, he could basically ignore uh, the Night Stalker and even the uh, uh, Shadow Demon. But yeah, it seems like not really it with with, dam with physical damage or nukes at this right, point. Right. Virtus Pro though, it's gonna make them fight a tier two mid, and I don't think the Radiant will take this fight. No, I, I don't think so. It looks like we're gonna see it just taken down with relative ease. The question is, do they look to keep on pushing? There is a split push coming from well, so the bottom lane at Bright Mouth Sports. Anti Mage Black is in the jungle. He's goes battle three now. Trying to accelerate his farm, but it looks like they're going to have to defend this tier 3. Batrider scouting around and it's like, oh, I can't find anyone. Let's just keep chipping at this tier 3 tower. The good news from our sports is that means his fireflies are used up. They no one got picked off. They're going to be able to trade towers at bottom lane, and now they TP back and should be able to defend. Antimage maybe not even coming. Black could just go for an all out counter push at top. Yeah, the thing is, I think the Radiant, they get it quicker. It looks like, oh, TP from Prophet. They're going to do a base race, and I'm not too sure whether they have a big enough lead to do that base race in terms of damage output. Here comes the Tombstone. That's going to really, really start working on this tower. Of course, Flat Cannon mowing down the creep wave as well. Somebody just hit the tower. Don't be going back and forth, Batrider. What are you doing? And they're Actually, delaying this. They're delaying they're this. this. It's completely. The Revenant stuns helping stall things up. There's TP's top now. There we go. Night Stalker and Batrider have arrived. But it's a melee barracks already taking fall. Anthony, he brings down the Batrider, blinks on out. And Night Stalker can't really do a whole lot because he's out of mana. So they trade melee reactions. And now the chase is on at mid. Fata has low mana, but he's got enough for an impale if he uses this wand. Use your wand. Use your bottle charges. He does. He's going to catch up the Undying. And here comes Black. Black has arrived. He's going to bring down the Shadow Demon as well, it looks like. Shadow Demon has nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He's used his force up. And they're going down mid lane. They get top practice. They may just counter Rex mid lane. They lost their own melee Rex at, at, at mid, but they're just going to say, hey, let's just go mid. Nature's Prophet with an MKB now. This Prophet is absolutely huge. He's going to TP up top here to get that last range Rex and make sure they seal the deal. If you don't TP the trees, Lothar's being... Oh He's my god, this is the biggest backstab of all time. He has a Cypher Vice. He's going to go on the, before the BKB's pop on the Gyrocopter. There you go, Gyrocopter. Blink, Manta, focusing here on the Storm Mage. Does he have buyback? He does. He does. 
but regardless, fun. that was a, still a great, great gank from QLJ, teeping into their base and wind walking. And he forced he forced uh, another buyback from the Undying as well. It wasn't just the gyrocopter who dies and buys back. Undying suddenly sees, oh crap, my base is in trouble. They're going to push uphill. I got to buy back. And Mouse Sports, they get an easy little pick off. They don't get erect, but they're going to say, hey, that's a really great trade for us because Undying as well as gyrocopter now use up their buyback gold and. Suddenly things looking pretty good for Mouse Sports. At, at worst, they're on even terms, and I think they're ahead right now. I think they're definitely ahead as well. Go chart shows about a 3k go lead, but I don't think that's the that, that really is the lead. It's the fact that anti mage becoming really, really big at this point. And how they got there, right? I mean, normally you say anti mage, oh, you know, 32 minutes in. Black's not farming that well. He's only got Manta, Battle Fury, and about 4k. But if you just joined us, just look at the heroes. If you just went for the standard Battle Fairy build, you were not going to make it here alive because the pushing team of VP was just so scary. He adjusts his skill build, adjusts his item build, and was able to delay till the Battle Fairy much, much later, and now still being effective with that split push. Yep, we're not seeing the Vlads, we're not seeing the Treads, but uh, he wants bigger items. I think he's quickly realizing he can get them. He can actually get that farm now, and with 4k gold, Heart or Butterfly, what's it going to be? I, maybe just the Heart here, because at that point he's unkillable. Really. I don't see there being enough damage. There's a silence from a Night Stalker, the Bat Rider Lasso, but they can't even kill him during those things. And there's, there's the Manta style to get out of the silence, anyways. Yeah, I mean, if you if he's uh really just want to do the damage output, Butterfly is going to be the better case. But Flat Cannon as well as uh, Shadow Copter is always a very very scary hero to, to go against. So VP going to try sneak a Roshan here. If they can get this. They're in a slightly they're, they're in a slightly better position. They're not quite as uh, dire as things were before. Doesn't look like males are going to be able to come and stop it. They are going to scatter out in just a second with Koreans, but they're too late to stop this. So they'll be up against ages, which I still I still don't think it's going to be the end of the world for them. They've got Fata, who's got 3k gold. Would love to see him pick up something like a Blink Dagger here, just to have that strong, powerful initiation. Yep, Aegis goes to Gyrocopter. I think the only choice that's valid, because all the other heroes, even if gold, they respawn... Divine Rapier gold. Can we see Divine Rapier? Come on, Gyro. Let's go. I, I mean, so. Team Liquid oh, will do this. Oh, Team Liquid will go divine. Oh, do it. Do it. Oh, oh, oh. yes. Okay. Dude, it's, not, it's not even like a late game. This is still like no, early it's, to it's fine though. They're losing, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna say they're it's losing a the point. Music, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say they're losing the point. They have to win with divine, but it's such a good item pickup, especially when you're right there with the Aegis. I mean, go for it. Most most cost effective damage item in the game. It really is. He's, he's not being greedy, he's being cost effective. And that almost forces Black to go hard, right? Yeah, I think so. Well, Butterfly, you get the evasion against it, but Flat Cannon still hits even with the evasion, I guess, if you're not attacking yes, Black. Yes, I think so, that's okay. the case. And he's not going to be it. He doesn't need to attack Black, and that yeah. they, makes all these uh, anti mage illusions do nothing. You either go hard or you go something like Abyssal Blade, so you can just blink on Gyrocopter. Well, not if he gets picked him. off, right? he got to be yeah. very, very careful about his positioning. Uh oh, Tame my wow, he actually it. baits out the scythe. That's pretty good. I mean, that's means Stormbridge is not getting scythe. Uh oh, Flame Lasso initiation here against the Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin. Oh, Ghost Scepter. losses and let him die at this point. And suddenly, okay. this game, I think for the Radiant team, you don't take a fight for six minutes and something then you gank. Just, something just stunned Nature's Prophet as he was TPing. I know it was a homing missile from Gyrocopter. But he goes in busy, TP's out, and I, I think they have to go five man. At this point, VP with this divine ramp you pick up, it's not something they can look to sit back with. They just go five man mid or something. I feel well, it looks like they're gonna go five man top. Exactly. I, I think if you're radiant, you, you try to delay and delay, delay till Aegis but, down, and then you take a fight because there's no way you can. Like is the right thing at bottom lane. He goes yep. complete out all that counter push at bottom. So. But he's going to force back TPs. This he's push at bottom is coming faster than the one at top. The top, there's still a tier 2 tower, and this is not really good for VP because they want to be just looking to go 5-man, take Raxes now, or at least force a fight. And even if it's at the Mouseports base, they're happy to force a 5v5 fight, but Mouseports say, we're not going to take that. We're not going to fall into that trap. We're going bottom lane with Black. And, and Black is not, it's not going for heart. He's going for full Butterfly. Yep. But Night Stalker is going to be basically standing here to hold against uh, Black, and he should be able to do so. And basically, it's going to be a 5v4 with a gyrocopter divine BKB. Here comes those TPs. They got to focus on Storm or Storm Rage. Right? They really can't. Here comes the BKB divine. Call down. Everybody's running away. So all these damage pretty much wasted the Ghost Swarm. Going to waste the first Flat Cannon. And if Flat Cannon's down for about a couple of seconds, they could actually take the fight right now. Here and we no go. BKB They're going to try. The gyrocopter. They've got to be careful. He has got the Aegis still, so he can still do a lot of damage. As Mal Sports are just looking to kite things around here. It looks like all said and done. Black forced to blink away. QOJ in the trees, he is going to TP out. They're going to back, retreat to the high ground. Oh, there's a pick off though. Dead Nino. Nino, deader than dead. Uh, it's going to do some damage. He's going to survive a little bit, but eventually he will go down. Oh. 
They're gonna go. They're gonna go, just go for the high ground push now. They got the Aegis still for a bit longer. Their BKB will come off cooldown as well. 25 seconds, I guess, but they can look to push before that. By the t if he goes in, dies, and respawns, he'll have the BKB by that time. So I think they just send Gyrocops to go in high ground, pop the flat cannon, start hitting the tower, and that'll bounce onto these other heroes with the flat cannon. No, I think he. Oh, he's gonna do that right now. There's a site, but he's got the Aegis, so you gotta burst him down quick and then retreat. But no, they're getting so much disruptive flat cannon. It's gonna do a lot of shock. Keep in mind, the flat cannon has a very, very long cooldown. Respawning a couple of seconds. Here comes Black. Black is actually going to go back, and that's going to give him enough time to regain the Flat Cannon cooldown. He just does not care right now. He's going to just focus on the racks. Batrider barely surviving. Anti-Mage. Is he going to blink back out? He's really going to blink back out and fight. BPG gets popped a second time in the fight, and they're going to go and QOJ. QOJ is going to get that kill. He's going to just TP out Mana for it for the kill. Oh, no. Do you want to cancel his TP? Looks like they want the Aegis. No, not the Aegis. to get the Divine. <laughs> GG. Well, Antimage dies, he buys back, and Divine Rapier on Nature's Prophet just TP bottom, end the game! There's a Batrider there who does have Lasso, okay, maybe don't TP bottom. Do you want my, don't, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself, don't TP bottom just yet. But, buybacks now, Gyrocopter says, well this is it, I may have no items, but... I, I don't know if he needed to buy back there. He needs to be looking at picking up another mid to late game item at this point, now that he's lost his Divine Rapier, and there was no push coming just yet, so... A bit of a preemptive buyback, if anything. I, I completely agree. I mean, if he could maybe respawn without the buyback, he has to go for Crystallis, which is a big thing, a big way to increase your damage output. Uh-oh, Prophet, I see some TPs. Don't play around with that Divine. I mean, one thing he can be doing is uh, if he's going to go on some suicide, like, ganking mission, he could always drop the Divine in the base. Go for that gank and then come back and pick it up, unless he thinks he needs that damage output. But for now, Kyo Joy just enjoying the spoils of the war right now. Yeah, he is going to be so, so happy about his position. Maybe picks up a B... He's going crit, but I feel like he needs a BKB to stay alive with this, even with the Lasso in the playing field. Having a BKB with that Divine Rapier is going to be so, so important, but he hasn't really got the space for it, unless he gets rid of that Shadow Blade. But the Shadow Blade is what's keeping him alive more than a BKB might. The Dire team, they've got no gem. They've got... I haven't even got Sentry. Oh, they have got gem. Night Stalker with the gem now. Right now, the mission is to get a kill on Nature's Prophet and get that Divine back. I hope Gyrocopter has slots ready to pick him up. They're gonna smoke him from behind, but they're gonna run, they're gonna cut across for a Alex, and Alex is fine dying as long as Nature's Prophet don't die. Spell being dropped out right now. Kyojin high ground here. Lasso finds him, gotta focus him down. And there we go, Storm Rage focusing, focusing. Is he gonna drop the divine? He drops the HP, he got it back. Black Cannon activated, Black Cannon, boom, boom, boom. They're trying to fight him through. You cannot wow. fly a Flight Cannon. Gyrocopter, he gets defensively disrupted. He's fine, they got the Divine back and everybody on the Radiant side is down. They also don't have buyback. Keep on that, used all their buyback previously. Fata is the only person alive. So you gotta heal him up, use your oh, undying no. heals. They lose Shakiro as well now. Alex snipes him and this is going from bad to worse for Mouse Sports. Anti-Mage, he couldn't afford to go down, especially after buying back the last fight. It's gonna be at least a mid racks. I, they just go for the GG even. They can go for the T4s. They're gonna play it a bit safer and go for the top Raxes here, so they've at least got this four racks cushion. Top lane, they are losing their own tier fours. Tier four tower goes down. Does that give anyone enough gold to buy back? It doesn't look like it. Nature's Prophet, the crit, I, the crit was just a bit too greedy. He needed the survivability from a BKB or something, I feel there. Yeah, I completely agree. On hindsight, they, he just needed, well, find him. And they pretty much burst him down with physical damage, but the BKB would definitely help right now. And again, Illidan Storm Rage. They, they found what? the Nyx. Fata gets caught out again. These these pickoffs is coming. It just, it's the end of Mount Sports and all these fights. And, well, it's one measly range barracks left alive. Antimate still dead, as is Nature's Prophet. I think they should just go look for that Rax. Get that last Rax. They forced a TP back. It's the, it's, well, it's KSI who has to defend the throne. They lost both T4 towers in their own base. And maybe Nature's Prophet goes for the throne here. TP, try KS the throne or something. He needs to go all off the back door. No, he's going to look for the kills here. TP's pass, finds Shadow Demon. Shadow Blade is there, followed by Side the Vice. So they will get the one pick off, but probably the least important pick off in the game. So if you are the, uh, Gyrocopter here, do you just hide your Aegis, or no, hide your Divine somewhere on the ground, like hide it in your base? Don't ever carry it again? I think it's worth having, because right now Mouse Sports are going for the five man all mid, YOLO, we've got to win this game now or lose. Push. Right, right. Do you need it to defend? If you drop it, yes. you, your drone is dead. If you, if you drop it, it means you're dead, and if you're dead, you've lost the game anyway. Even though he has buyback, if he dies and has to... He maybe could, he could he die do... and then pick up the Divine yeah, again. Maybe the second life you should take the rapier, but I think, I think this is like two... 
far theory crafting beyond at this point in the game he's just thinking i gotta defend and the divine rape is gonna help so all right here we go i think it's too theory crafty oh man he's got oh it. my gosh santa just blinked into absolutely nothing he didn't grab anyone he gets hexed up as well night soccer goes in the bkb trying to push back this push and it, it will succeed in doing so they bring down two right off the bat and it looks like GG, Nature's Prophet, no buyback, will have it in 20 seconds at least, so they will look to wait this out. Fata gonna get grabbed by the Lasso now, a really late Lasso since he couldn't find one before. And another three kills, Black is top, he's going for a counter push here. We'll see VP go look to basically end the game while Antimate is going for a split push. Nature's Prophet will probably buy back, but save it, maybe save the buyback for when they're on the throw. So go for basically just back up Black. No, he's no. gonna buy back now. Yeah, maybe he's gonna try to get a gank on here on Vampire on top, but he's gonna be dealing... Oh, oh there's a gem. There's a gem though. They're coming in. Does he have the Manta available? He does have it. Where's the Cypher Vice? No Cypher Vice. Teleportation comes in KSI. Uh oh, he's got to blink back out. He's still silenced up. He's still silenced up. Four people defending. It's actually Gyrocopter TPing back right now. It's a 5v2 fight. Really, perhaps overcommitting. They're going to get KillJ for sure. KillJ is going to just fight his way out. He has Invis, but he's going to die none the least. So no buyback left here on the Nature's Prophet. And they got to go back and defend. Yeah, this is this is getting very, very desperate for Mouse Sports. They. They went for something there. I think they had to hide the fact that Antimage was top for a bit longer, wait for VP to go sort of look to four or five man bottom, and as soon as they were pushed out too far, then Antimage says, oh, by the way, guys, I can split push. And I think they need to even save that nature's profit buyer, because as soon as they see the profit buyer, they're thinking, okay, we've got to defend. There's a potential profit TP, and Antimage is pushing top. They can either go for the throne or at least get two or three kills, unless we're here as five. So they basically get back as five, and then they go look for this push. VP are in no rush. When you're up, you got yourself five Raxes, they'll happily defend for the next 10, 15 minutes, because they know that as long as they defend that counter push, they're gonna win this game. I mean, I will at least hold for a couple minutes until my Glyph comes back at the very least. But right now they're saying Prophet's dead for 38 seconds. There's only one Rax. As long as our Gyrocopter don't die, we should be fine at taking the Rax and backing the hell out. And let's see if that's gonna be the case. Range Rax under siege. There's a Glyph being used right now. And Tame Wow is just disrupting right now. Rax is gonna go down like three or four hits to the Gyrocopter. They got it. They got the Divine or Mega Creeps. And they just need a back right now, right? Why are you still in the base? Well, get kills, end game. I mean, that's how you end the game, Lumi. You can't, end, you can't end the game in your own base. You definitely can. You definitely can. <laughs> watch, what, watch the creep play X Hero Siege with yep. Anti Mage yep. trying to be trying to be the hero. But unfortunately, I think this time around it's going to be the creeps who are the villains as they're going in for this last minute save here. Can they actually hold this off? They've already lost Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin is their entire crowd control. His AoE stuns from Impale as well as Carapace are so essentially. They're going to try to bring down Gyrocopter, but they can't do it. They're Satanic. He heals them back up just enough. anti and Nyx is probably both dead. This is your GG. Black calls it. It was such a close down to the wire game. Wow. Lumi, I don't know how we're still breathing after today. We've had so many epic, crazy games today and all well, the past two days as well. Look, I'm just blessed. Yeah, I'm I, I don't know. And congratulations to Virtus Pro as well, because they will be going to the SARS Ladder Land Final, amongst other teams. So, wow, what a finish. What a finish. Yeah, that was exciting, man. This has been a fun day of Dota casting. I think that's it from us. And the good news is, for those of you tuning in, Q Pandas are about to go play their second official competitive game. But for those of you guys tuning in beyond the summit, thanks everyone for supporting us. That was the Star Ladder. Uh, group stage match to decide who goes to the land finals. I'm Gods and he is Luminous. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and all that jazz. I'm twitter.com slash btsgods and he's Luminous Inverse on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Any final words, Lumi? I will be casting some of these Q pack games as well as the Team Liquid versus Fnatic series on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched those games, check, tune in later and uh, go support me. But thank you for having me, Gods. It was a great weekend of matches and uh, what a way to top it off with a Divine Rapier on Gyrocopter. Yeah, that was absolutely crazy. Oh, I don't know. Divine Rape to Gyrocopter playing bouncy bounce around the place and I, I thought at one point Mouse would have it, but unfortunately it wasn't the case. Big thanks to everyone who tuned in with us throughout the entire weekend. As, uh, well, that was a lot of fun. It was indeed. Hope you guys enjoyed it, but that's it for us now for BTS. This is Luminous and Gods, and we are signing off to you guys.